All right, so now we're gonna end this section on hair pieces, talking about fashion pieces. Um, there's really not much to say other than they're a rehash of what I said in the last segment. Um, they're gonna be your attachable ponytails, your bangs. These are gonna be to enhance your style. You might want a fun look for the night and you'll have something you can do on the go. A lot of the famous um, makeup YouTubers will do the fashion pieces. Um, oh, and just a funny related note. Typically, um, because some people's natural hair, believe it or not, natural hair can look like a wig. So if you've ever seen me in person, I've had a client when I worked at TJ Maxx, I was ringing her up and she actually reached over while I was like typing her up and she starts going like this and she goes, is this a wig? And I'm like, uh, um, no, it's, it's my hair and no, it's real. So always know that you may think someone's wearing a wig when they're not and vice versa. So that's the really um, fun part of this chapter. I'm like, I mean, like I have a dry sense of humor, so. Um, I have a nervous laugh too if someone's wig like flies off and I see that I'm like oh man I've seen that happen once with a coworker when I worked in retail who She went to go get something and the wig flew off her hair and she literally caught it in the air And I'm like I had to say oh, I have to go to the bathroom So I ran and I ended up hiding and just started cracking up because I'm like this is funny um, but anyhow um, back on topic the Fashion pieces can come in so many ways. They give you a wide um, variety of pictures um, you'll know that if you have my version of the book, this model has a very defined smile that scares a lot of students. Um, she got a cascade piece, but it looks very, like she's smiling in that one photo and it actually scares me. Her cascade curls look a little obvious in that picture, like it is wiggy. So you might have to style it a little bit better. You can also do the thing where you put the hair in a clip where there's two clips tied around the ponytail and just take a, a trendy band and tie it around and it designs it well. Bridal style, sorry, bridal styles may require some hair additions that are only worn for a day, and that's a good example. Um, hair extensions. Now we get to the fun part. This is where it's more modern. Hair extensions are hair additions that are secured to the base of the client's natural hair in order to add length, volume, texture, or color. Extensions can be human hair, synthetic hair, or a blend of the two. They are either wefts of hair strands, small bundles of hair. The latter are attached by one-on-one -on -one and are usually pre-bonded or keratin-tipped unless they are clip-in extensions. They are applied with a semi-permanent attachment method. So hair extensions are increasing in popularity. Clients may want to look for something different. They may want to add some color. Maybe they just want one side piece you're custom doing for them. Or maybe it's for something serious. Maybe they want hair length. Their hair length can't grow past a certain length or they may have some hair loss they want to disguise. So in um, knowing what you want to do is very important in consultation. Are you looking for something that is thicker? Are you looking for something that has a different color? Those two things are very important. Knowing the final style is very important, so you want to map it out. You always want to stay one inch away from the hairline at the front side's nape and the crown. So I typically I tell people, do a mohawk parting, section off about an inch of hair on both sides, and when you do your parting here, take a little bit of a dip. That way you prevent from when the hair falls down. You don't see any wefts here or tracks. You don't see any tracks or wefts here or there. All the magic of the extension is going to happen underneath the hair and not in front of it. So two of the biggest mistakes I see people typically making when they start a cosmetology program is they come in wearing a hair extension and they actually wear it with a track showing up here which is incorrect or they'll put it too close where it bulges out and it creates a hump. So with hair extensions, um, manufacturers have their own method of training so make sure you get as much training as possible typically um, I recommend and the book recommends us getting more than one brand I think the book has like two brands of hair extensions to do training with that we have a variety also know that with very thin hair you have to be careful that the base does not show through curly hair tends to expand giving you the illusion of being thicker than it really is so when you're working with curly hair and curly hair pieces you typically need fewer wefts so always practice your skills. Know that matching the color is very important. Um, straight, thin, and curly hair may have similar densities, but curly hair will appear thicker. Know that. Know that there are different um, professional approaches to applying extensions. This book does not mention tape-in, so tape-in is a whole different category that we'll cover at some later point. Know that when it comes to Extension methods such as braid and sewing, simple bonding, also called fusion bonding, linking and tube shrinking. There is always the safety issue. You always want to um, follow the order of having the safety of client's hair. Comfort is a big one because that's a telltale sign something's wrong. 
There should not be any pulling or pinching and you wanna avoid tension on the natural hair that is excessive. Excessive tension, if the client calls you and says in you know, four hours, maybe they're a little tender headed, it hurts a little bit. They call you in two days and saying, oh, my hair feels really bad, I've been living on aspirin. That's your telltale sign, get them in the salon, get it out, because you can cause a lot of hair loss. You also wanna know, um, Security is very important. You want to make sure it's secure, it doesn't fall off because that can be very embarrassing. If they are attached to the semi-permanent methods such as braid and sew bonding or fusion bonding, you want to make sure they will last several weeks before they are removed or require adjustments to accommodate the hair's growth. Typically when you have beaded or sewn extensions, which is not mentioned in here, hair grows out. So what happens is the hair will grow out with the, um, the line in it and it becomes loose. If you have tape and extensions and the hair grows out and over time the tape is getting worn away and worn away, the adhesive wears and what happens is you can pull in the hair and it comes right off. I know in this current situation with um, the pandemic going on, a lot of people are complaining and there's a lot of funny memes saying what people are going to look like, missing half their hair because their extensions are coming out. That's a real issue. So the braid and sew method, this is going to be when hair extensions are secured to the client's own hair by sewing braids onto a weft or an on the scalp braid or cornrow, sometimes called a track. The wefts are attached by creating a track using a fiber filler. The fiber and the filler and hair from the scalp are braided together using an underhand braiding technique. The filler helps grip the client's own hair and creates a longer lasting braid to which you attach the wefts. The angle of the track determines how the hair will fall. You may position the tracks horizontally, vertically, diagonal, or curved along the contours of the head. Know that partings are determined according to the style you've chosen. Um, the size of the section is determined by the amount of hair that will be added to the head. Plain tracks or braids. Plan the tracks or braids so that the ends are hidden. It is best to position them one inch behind the hairline. So know that there's different ways to sew them in. Um, you'll use a needle to sew them in too, and you have to be very careful not to scratch your scalp. There is the lock and stitch method where you cut a length of thread that is double the length of the weft being sewn, pass the needle through the weft to connect it into the track, pull the thread through to create a loop, pass the needle through the loop and wrap the thread around the needle, pull the loop tight to form a lock stitch to secure the ends of the weft in the track. This stitch can be used over an entire length of the track in evenly spaced stitches. You want to make sure you're not doing like stitch, space this big in stitch, you want to be consistent. Smaller time-consuming stitches the better. A service like this at a minimal will cost at least, if you're there for four hours, it could be a few thousand depending on where you are working, but at a minimal starting at a thousand and then price up. There's the double lock stitch. The stitch is much like the lock stitch, but the thread is round around the needle twice, creating a double lock. There's the overcast stitch, and this is the simple quick stitch. It should be used to secure the entire weft of the track. You pass the needle under both the track and the weft, bring it back over to make a new stitch. Moving along the track, repeat the stitch until you reach the end of the track. Complete the track with a lock stitch for security. Advantages of braid and sew method include the fact that if it's done correctly, it's very safe. It requires no special equipment, and with practice, you can do it quickly. Drawbacks include that if there's too much tension on the braid, the client's real hair can be damaged badly. Also, the technique is not appropriate for clients who have extremely damaged hair because if you're putting that much pressure, you'll actually create a permanent dent and an excessive shedding of it. So they give you some um, braid and sewing examples. This photo is a little dated, but that's one of them. Uh, the photos in here are golden, but some of them are not as dated as they are now, are, not, are dated and they're not as relevant as they are today. The next method is the very old school method, and I'll be honest, I've only used this method twice in my life, and it was back in 2010, helping a friend. This is the bonding method. Bonding method involves attaching the hair extensions or wefts in single strands with an adhesive or bonding agent. The adhesive is applied to the weft with an applicator gun, almost like it would see at a craft store, but this gun is a different than those available in craft stores. It is a tool created specifically for bonding. For bonding, the natural hair should be left at least four inches long. Bonding, bonded hair sits snugly on the head and is fast to apply. There is, however, a certain degree of slippage. Generally, the bonding product lasts from two to four weeks, depending on factors such as frequency of shampooing, oiliness or dryness of the scalp, and quality of the products used. This means that the client will need to be on a maintenance program that requires salon visits as often as every two weeks. That will bring you money in the salon and the client will also get the service they want because it's a luxury service. 
If you want the bonding to last a lot longer, advise them to be very careful with how hot their water is in the shower, if they're taking long hot showers, if they're going under the pool and swimming a lot. If they're going into a hot tub, that is something you have to be very careful of. Tapins are a lot more secure than this. You start by securing the hair at the nape. Measure the first weft against the parting a quarter to half an inch away from the hairline. Lay the weft on a flat surface and carefully apply the adhesive along the base. So that's the strip. Lightly press the weft against the clean parting. Too much product will ooze on the head. Too little will fall to adhere. A lot of clients complain about this method because you will itch. It does itch. It's like Gorilla Glue. Hold the hair for approximately 20 seconds, gently tugging to make sure that the weft is adhered. You may use a blow dryer set on low to medium heat to help seal the bond. This will cure it. Proceed to the next section working upward in the head until the desired amount of length and volume is achieved. You want to use care when bonding to avoid working too close to the crown and the parting or the weft will show through. So working one inch away from the hairline will also keep the wefts from showing. Remember that hair is not a static material, it has natural swing and movement. So you also want to take a thinning or blending shear and blend the um, extensions, shatter that texture, make it disperse. Know that bonded wefts are removed by dissolving the adhesive bond with an oil or a bond remover. If you don't have anything, if you're very careful, you can use acetone. That's what we used on one of my classmates a while ago. The same technique can be used with loose hair wefts that are cut in a very small section. This is called strand bonding. So strand bonding, they added this in the wrong way. Strand bonding is when you take small pieces and you want maybe a little bit of length here. It's also a good corrective technique. If someone has a bad haircut, you're able to blend it better. Two advantages of bonding is that it can be offered at very affordable prices and the service does not take much longer than the average haircut appointment. Also, the client can shampoo with the wefts in as long as it's done gently. One drawback of bonding is that some clients have an allergic reaction to the adhesive. Always perform a patch test prior to the application of bonded extensions, especially when using a latex-based adhesive. Also, bonding is not appropriate for clients who have severely damaged hair or those that don't have enough natural hair to hide the wefts. The wefts cannot be exposed to oils or they will slide off. Generally, bonding should not be used to attach wefts that are longer than 12 inches to avoid excessive heaviness and the possibility of pulling out the client's natural hair from their scalp. So fusion bonding method is the next method, and that's a method of attaching extensions. Extension hair is bonded to the client's own hair with bonding material that is activated from heat from a special tool. This is extremely time consuming and expensive, but it will harmonize a client's natural hair with no uncomfortable or unattractive attachment sites. The bonds are light and comfortable to wear and the hair moves like real hair, and the hair is easy to maintain. The attachment laps lasts up to four months, so it also lasts the longest. The fusion method requires certification training because it is manufacturer specific. Some fusion bonding products procedures involve wrapping keratin based strip around the, both the client's hair and extension or applying the bond to the extension first with a special gun applicator. Today many of the extensions or additions are pre-tipped or keratin tipped. In fusion bonding, natural strands along a parting are selected and then isolated with a hair shield. These look like little like squares, you put them on there and you fasten it on. Um, there is also an advantage that with bonding the client's hair will dry more quickly than when bonding full wefts because there is less bulk. You can de the illusion of highlights and lowlights if you uh, do different bonds, you can also do them to get a wide array of colors. Some suppliers will um, take back the extension hair and re-tip it, which saves costs others will not, so this will play a role in what brand you decide to sign on with. Some will offer you deals, some will offer you free education, some will offer you education and unlimited access to a database. This is all good things to think about when you're signing up with a brand. Think smart, act the right questions, and also um, don't be afraid to play hardball and say like, well, like, what can you offer me with this because this company offered me this. Know um, that linking is, with linking a hook is used to pick up small amounts of hair off a of parting. A link is slid on and closed on the scalp with a special tool. Then an extension or special addition is inserted into the link. Once the extension and the natural hair are captured in the link, it's pinched flat with pliers and removed properly with a tool. So um, advantages of, you oh, by the way, to use linking, the hair should be at least five inches long. 
because um, if it's shorter than that, you're not able to sh um, hide it without having it be obvious and look scary. When some advantages of linking is that you have a style style versatility and the fact that the integrity of the natural hair is maintained if the procedure is done properly. Some drawbacks is that it is expensive, time consuming, and the metal links can oxidize, meaning rust in the hair, and that's not always good for the client. Also know that um, if it's metal, you have to be careful with your irons because it can scratch them up if you're not careful. There's also the tube shrinkage method where the client's hair and the addition are inserted into a tube and then heated to shrink it. It requires special tools and training. Um, know that all problems can arise. These problems are caused by stylists, not the material. Know that these products do not cause damage. I'm going to say it again. The extensions do not cause damage. It is the stylist that causes the damage. It is lack of training. It is overconfidence. It is um, overpromising, under delivering. You're only as good as the tools you use. It's not the tool's fault. It's the stylist's fault when something goes wrong. Clients must also follow an at-home regimen. This is why it's very important to have a contract. I recommend taking, if you want a really good class, the Illustrated Beauty class I mentioned before. Contact Jenny um, Jacome on her website, Illustrated Beauty. She'll be more than happy to give you um, tips. I think she even, um, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure she flies out to the salon. She offers a wealth of knowledge and you have access to a group online with constant education and she checks up and follows up with you. So it's really good because you feel cared for and you actually get a lot of respect. Um, and you get so much from the course. You also want to know too that um, with her class you get a contract and her contract's incredible because it you go over it with the client, you pre-prep it, you have a deposit for the um, session. Typically you're going to charge them $25 to $50 for a consultation fee. So if the client decides to get these extensions and you have a copy that they have signed legally so you have that for you, they have one. If they don't sign, you don't do the service because if they sign it, they're aware that if they go home and they bleach their hair at home or they color it at home, they ruin their wefts, they're responsible. Know that you can um, retail hair addition products in the salon, you can retail um, stick on hair pieces, you can do so much. So explain why the client wants them. You want to work with one or two companies with a good range of um, human and synthetic hair for best results. Always stick with companies that stand by their products. Um, and a final thought, practice, practice, practice. Practice makes perfect. Know that you must practice to get good at your skill. Rome is not built in a day. I'm always a lifelong learner with this. The way I learned how to do extensions is nothing like I'm doing them now. So that's how fast the industry is changing. So I always think this is pretty cool. It shows the power of how good extensions can look if you do them correctly. If you're a celebrity stylist in the future, um, by the way, if you're one of my students, always give a shout out to Mr. B. <laughs> but know that you can do a great deal of help with extensions. And on that note, really know how, why we're here. We're helping people. We can make them look better. We can help them with a chronic illness. We're there because we care and we want to make them look better. Study this chapter, um, read it out. Your test will be vocab heavy. It'll be a little confusing um, and we'll have a lot of fun practicing this. So the next chapter we're going to do, um, we're going to have some fun. Make sure to bring your um, waves because we're going to be getting into the wave runner, favorite chapter, chemical texture services and perms, or as they say in British, a palm. So I will see you guys soon for that chapter.